Oh, guys, are you excited? Like, I'm excited. Hey, I am crazy, crazy excited. Football Manager 2021 has been announced. There is a release date, but that's not what I'm excited for. It's the FM Scout website. They have a coupon. Go to FM Scout's website. The link is in the description. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to FM Scout, it is RDF and today we will be showcasing another, another excellent tactic. This one was created by someone in Discord, I became intrigued by it, so I then thought I might as well have a look and make some tweaks if any tweaks needed to be made. Honestly, at the start, I didn't think tweaks needed to be made, but after contacting the author, I just felt maybe I could do something and make it a little joint tactic because this is a shape that isn't used on Football Manager on a regular basis, and we've managed to get this very, very successful. The author originally got some excellent results with his Lech Poznan team over in the Polish league. This time, we are going to try it with Braga in the Portuguese league. So just looking at the shape alone, you can tell that it's unique. It is a 3-1-3-1-2 with a DM making it asymmetric. It's a fairly attacking system. I think this because we have two wingers out and out wingers rather than full backs supporting the defence. This gives us more attacking efficiency but, but you do not lose that compactness and that sturdiness at the back. This is actually a very, very good tactic when it comes to goals conceded. So this tactic brings plenty of attacking chances, mainly the chances come from out wide with the two wingers hitting their crosses in early as possible with the three forward players, that's the two strikers and the attacking midfielder causing trouble with plenty of movement. The forward three attacking movement patterns often make it a pain to defend against. One striker looks to stay on the shoulder of the last defender and also stretch in play by moving into the channels. The other striker, which is a false nine, will look to drop deeper into the attacking midfield area whilst the player positioned in the attacking midfield area will then look to make his forward runs into the spaces created by the false nine. In midfield the box to box midfielder will look to balance the midfield by making forward runs but also tracking back he is the workhorse in this system. The defensive midfielder then becomes the glue for the midfield he will look to hold his position in between the lines between the midfield and the defence also helping prevent any counter-attacks that may happen. And then the back three, which are ball playing defenders, will need to be comfortable on the ball as a lot of the play will actually start from the build up from the back. In possession, the tactic will generally look to control the game, but with pace. On the ball, people must make their decisions quick as the ball needs to be with the players further up the pitch. That is where the real magic happens. When the ball is in the wider areas, the wingers are asked to get their crosses in early to try and unsettle the opponent. But also, we don't want our wingers holding onto the ball for too long because, of course, if they lose the ball in possession, it is only them on the flanks. This can cause some dangerous counter-attacks down our flanks. Having only three defenders means that we could have been light at the back if the counter-attack does happen, so therefore we want to win the ball back as quickly as possible to not allow the opponents to play. To achieve this, we must close down, also keep a high line. So with all of that said, let's look into the tactic and let's explain some of the instructions. As you can see here, we actually have two systems. So the one with the advanced forward and the attacking midfielder on support, we mainly use this against the teams that we are expecting to beat. So I am Braga, we are predicted to finish fourth. Anyone below me, I am expecting to win those matches. And then we do have a target man addition with a second striker. This became stronger when we played the stronger opponents, mainly because with the target man, this gives us the ability to beat the opponent with a more direct pass. So now looking at the instructions, you can see the mentality is on attacking. We want to play some risky football and also quick football. The attacking width is on fairly wide. Our approach play, we are only going to be playing out of defense when our defense has the ball. 
Our passing directness is slightly shorter, not too short, but it's slightly shorter. Trying to keep the ball a little better. As you can see, if we do get hit on their counter-attack, especially down the flanks, we could be in trouble. But with the tempo, to balance the risk, we went with extremely high. As I said earlier, we still want risk, we just don't want to go overboard with it. So with the tempo extremely high, this helps us get the ball to the morph where we have more players positioned. In the final third, we want the balls to be whipped, trying to make it impossible to defend against. And we want to hit those early crosses in. With the dribbling, we want to run at the defence. We want to add more directness to our game. As you can see, we only have the wingers and the full snines that are asked to dribble more often naturally. So we want more players to adapt a more direct approach with the dribbling. In possession, we have gone with the counter press and the counter when the possession has been won and lost. Of course, we want to win the ball back as quick as possible. And then when we win the ball back, we don't want to remain static. We want to get further up the pitch and trying to expose the opponent. When goalkeeper is in possession, we want him to distribute it to the centre backs and to do that he can throw it long, sometimes he rolls it out or he kicks it short. Out of possession, we have the offside trap with a higher line of engagement and a higher defence line. Like I said, we want to win the ball back early and we also want to squeeze the opponents higher up the pitch. With the defence width, we have gone with standard, try and maintain some width when we are defending. With the pressing intensity, we have gone with more urgent to try and win the ball back quicker. We are going to try and prevent the short goalkeeper distribution from the opponents. And when we're making our tackles, we want to get stuck in more, try and get the ball back more aggressively. For the target man edition, all the instructions are the exact same. Apart from get stuck in, we have removed that as, of course, the bigger opponents may have better dribblers and if they go into dribble against us we cannot afford to be beaten too much especially with only three at the back so for the player roles in goal we just have the goalkeeper on defend he has no instructions on him for the two wider ball playing defenders we have pass it shorter trying to maintain some possession and for the defender in the middle he is also a ball playing defender but he is going to be covering the two wider ball playing defenders in defensive midfield we have the defensive midfielder on support we are asking him to take more risks, hold position and tackle harder. The reason why we are asking him to take more risks is we don't have anyone naturally taking more risks in game. So some of these players will need to have take more risks. At the moment, it's only the ball playing defenders that really have it hard coded in them naturally. So we are going to try and add it to more players. The other central midfielder is the box to box midfielder who will be looking to get up and down. We have added get further forward instruction alongside tackle harder and take more risks. The two players on the flanks are wingers on support. We are asking them to pass it shield are trying to keep the ball better in possession. Hold their position. We don't want them to be roaming, leaving their position because they are the lone players on the flank. And we are also asking them to mark tighter. In attacking midfield support, he has a few instructions. So again, he has to take more risk, but he also has shoot more often. He has get further forward, roam from position, move into channels and tackle harder. So of course the idea is when the false nine drops, we want the attacking midfielder to leave his position to try and find the pockets. And when he does get further forward, mainly around or in the box, we want him to be shooting more often. For the false nine, for the player that's going to drop deep, we only have him tackling harder. And same goes for the advanced forward. We want them to play exactly like how an advanced forward wants to play, but with tackle harder, so a more aggressive advanced forward. For the target man addition, the only two different roles are the second striker who is on attack. He's going to try and attack the space a bit more aggressive as we now have kind of two creators up top. We are asking him to shoot more often, roam from position and tackle harder. For the target man, we are only asking him to tackle harder. Now we have covered the instructions and the tactic, let's look at how the team actually performed in the league. So in the top league in Portugal, as you can see, Braga became the champions. We played 34, winning 27, drawing 5 and only losing 2. The two games that we lost came against Benfica, home and away, which is fairly disappointing. But considering the strong side they had, it is not too, too disappointing. It's just a little upsetting that we couldn't at least get a point from them all season. As you can see here, our expectation was to only qualify for the Europa League. 
In the Europa League, we did get knocked out in the quarterfinals, so we did actually get far and we got further than our expectation. Our expectation was to only reach the first knockout round. In one of the Portuguese Cups, we got knocked out by a team that's actually in the league below us when our expectation was to reach the semi-final. That was a disappointing performance, but of course, in the cup games, I did have to drop some of the key players. In the other Portuguese Cup, though, we are the winners. Uh, again, our expectation was the semi-final, but we managed to win that trophy. As you can see here, we came third with the average possession with 54%. We scored the most goals in the league with 86 goals. We have the best crossing in the league by far. Again, that is a testament to the tactic as that is one of the main approach for attack and play. When it comes to goals from corners, we done excellent. We scored the most goals from corners. When it comes to chances created, we also created the most chances in the league, but by just one beating Benfica with 107 chances created. Shots on target, we had the most shots on target, but when it comes to our conversion rate, we only came 7th with 10%. When it comes to fouls against, we are third, so we are drawing a few fouls. In defence, you can see that we are very, very solid because we were the best defence in the league. That is beating Benfica and Porto, who have very, very good defenders, unlike Braga. With the clean sheets, we came joint second with 16 clean sheets, just one behind the winners, which was Porto. When it comes to goals, we have João Noves. He scored 15 goals. That is just one behind the top goal scorer in the league. But what is most impressive is that we actually have four players in this league in this list we have João Noves, Paulinho, Chris Land and Fran Sergio who actually played as a ball winning midfielder and also a box to box so he had multiple different roles but it's nice to see him scoring 10 goals from midfield when it comes to shots João Noves had the most shots that is mainly because he was the attacking midfielder who is instructed to shoot more often. When it comes to chances created, Ricardo Asagio, he got 24 chances created, the most in the league, alongside João Noves. Paulinho is also on the list and Nuna who was our left-sided midfielder. When it comes to squad stats, as you can see, we have a few players that actually scored 10 goals or more. We have a few players that hit double figures. We have Abel Ruiz on that list and we have Rui Fonte on that list also who are the two backup strikers behind Chris Ladd and Paulinho. So when it comes to goals, your goals will be shared throughout the team. That is teamwork at its best. When it comes to assists, you can see that the wingers are going to be most important as they are the main creators. Our two left midfielders, they got six and eight assists respectively and our right midfielder got 21 assists while João Noves, our attacking midfielder who was easily the standout player, he got 18 assists alongside 17 goals. So he had an excellent, excellent season. When it comes to goal types, you can see that play shots was the way that we scored most of our goals. Powerful shots and headers also were kind of key to our play. Corners, we scored a few, we scored 10, we scored 13 from crosses, but we scored 21 from through balls, which is very, very pleasing to see that our through balls are working. That is to take more risk. We managed to create 54 clear cut chances in total and convert in 37 of those, which is fairly, fairly decent for a side like Braga. But that is it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. In the download link, we also have some training schedules in there too. So download that. So download that if you feel that you need some training schedules. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment. Thank you guys for listening. Please, please stay safe out there. It is a crazy world. It is RDF. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Peace.